50 miles to the east of the Ramblin' Rose is the 113-foot time bandit. We got 150,000 pounds to catch this trip, and we have seven days to do it in. We've been pulling for about 18 hours today already. OK, guys, 25 pots, 10,000 pounds, we go to sleep. If we don't, we keep grinding. Hard. Our Hawaiian coconut is throwing the hook. Well, Andy says after we pull these 25 pots, we can take a nap, so the faster we pull, the faster we get to take a nap. Jenny, who you don't want to throw the hook? Come on. I don't know if I can even reach that over my head. <laughs> Eddie Awikalani Jr. joined his father on the Time Bandit two weeks ago. Keep drinking them protein drinks. For the Greenhorn Deckhand, the journey has been rough. In two weeks, he's seen near misses. That was close. Horrible weather. You having fun yet, Eddie boy? And pain. Let's call your dentist. The brush your teeth. At 21 years old, he still has a lot to learn from his father. Eddie's a legend of Wakalani hook man. He's a rocket man. He don't miss. I've never seen my father throw the hook. Everybody says he's really good, and I guess he is. <laughs> you have a hard an Five hours later, the crew is still shy of Andy's goal. Nobody's bitching, nobody's whining. They're too tired. Hey, you guys, you guys be careful down there, man. Keep your head in the game. Yeah, everybody's slowing down right now. Black sweep. <laughs> on the boat. Oh, that scared the down me. As the crew shook out the last few crab, the 800-pound pot came loose from the dogs, nearly crushing the 140-pound Eddie Jr. Freak me out there for a minute. Oh, dude, that was scary. That pot was coming towards us, towards me. It was going to pinch us right here and crush us. As soon as I saw that, I grabbed Eddie Boy and threw him out of the way. Man, my heart was racing. I didn't even realize what was going on. It was like a bright light. I just stared at it. That pot right there is bigger and weighs more than a Prince. <laughs> what would your mother do, man? Eddie Jr. still has a lot to learn on deck. I'm gonna, I gotta send Eddie through pirate school, dude. Oh, yeah. He needs to talk like a pirate instead of a... He's, he's way too quiet. And his salty captains are happy to continue his education. Now making his appearance on deck, Captain John Hillstrand. You made it through hell, now you're back. You kicked its ass again. <laughs> yep. Good job, brother. You gonna get out here, man. We just gotta get you to bleep once on camera. Sending you through pirate school. <laughs> now it's time for him to learn how to cuss like a sailor. Maybe a little pirate lore. Captain John will school him. Come on, you want to be under this wing or that wing? I write the checks. You might change, you might change your diaper. I write the <laughs> checks. <laughs> right there, what's that? That's it's a red shovel. Right? right? What is that, Travis? Red shovel. Yeah, what is it, Ed? Red shovel. OK, Scott, what is that? Red shovel. It's an ice removing red Shovel. Say it. You gotta say it. That's a shovel. A <laughs> ice <laughs> removing <laughs> shovel. That's a <laughs> good <laughs> pot. There's a nice <laughs> clean <laughs> crab. See what this is? That's almost a <laughs> full 
full tank. <laughs> that is a full almost. It looks like it might be snow today. It's mighty cold outside. <laughs> he ain't gonna swear, is he? This model will kick his ass. <laughs> 380 miles from Dutch Harbor on the 155-foot Wizard. I can never get back on the crab as fast as I would like. It is a painstaking ordeal. Captain Keith Colburn approaches gear he reset after striking out to the south. There I am. There's all my gear. Just moved 82 miles to the north-northwest up the edge here. And I'm hoping there's something in the neighborhood. We need to get on fishing and hot fishing fast. Our time is limited out here, so we got to hurry up and start catching some crab. Come on. Every boy's a big pot to cheer about. Small bait, that's the problem on that one. Because those crab would just rip through those baits. Next thing you know, there's nothing in there for them to eat. Danny, hey Danny, that's not a bait setup. Those each need like one little tiny fish on each one, all right? Lynn, you've been through this before. Show them what to do. After four years struggling to earn respect on the wizard, come on, come on, come on, come on, come on. Lynn's career as a fisherman hangs by a thread. Where are you? If I have to have this conversation again, it's your last season on the boat. Hey, 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 I think yeah. we're good on the herring. We need to fill the jugs and cut the fish. Now, Lynn sees an opportunity. You got three shots of make one setup. It should be plenty easy enough. To make someone else the scapegoat. We've been dumping all his jugs for him too, right? Whatever. Doing the best I can. Danny's probably getting towards the end of his rope right now. He's a big, strong guy, but it's a little bit different working this pace and these hours than it is doing pretty much any other job out there. Come on, get in there, Danny. I've heard you the first time, dude. You know, I know what I'm doing. It's, it takes a lot to get me pissed off, but once in a while, it's like, dude. Danny's got crying over there. What do you tell him to do? Just grab the bait. With all eyes now on Danny, it's like I'll get the crowd. Lynn slips off the radar. Uh, Danny's feeling the effects of being out here for about five days and moving to 15, 20,000 pounds worth of bait. But more times than not, the guys break down up here before they break down here. Oh, yeah, get pissed off. <laughs> the wizard doesn't really accept any wimps. She's a cranky old broad, and she doesn't want anybody on here that's a sissy or a baby. After 18 hours of the wizard's relentless pace on deck, Keith keeps a wary eye on Danny. Danny, what is the crab to those guys, all right? Danny looks like hell. That kid is toast. Danny, there's no reason for you to crawl up there. The crab's already where the guys can reach him, and he's still pushing them towards him. The guys can grab him already. You know, you're wasting a set of hands on one job that you don't need, and next thing you know, you're behind on something, and now, now all of a sudden, the whole crew starts tumbling like dominoes. Now remember, don't go too deep into that corner, right? Hey, get out of that table. Get out of that table. a nap because you're not doing a whole of a lot. Use your hands, sweep the crab over, get over there and sweep the crab over. So far, you're wasting a set of hands here, okay? The guy can get from here to there in five seconds and he's sleeping the damn table. 
Those guys tell me not to jam them up too much, so I'm waiting for them to sort. I'm kind of stuck there at the table, and I get in trouble if I leave, so. I don't know what to do. <laughs> so I didn't know that Keith was such a great motivational speaker. Yeah, he is. He was he'd make a great kindergarten teacher, too. Yeah. Maybe we need to get up some decaf. 430 miles northwest of Dutch Harbor. Gut feeling is it's going to be a big day. Big day. Is the 109 foot Seabrook. First six spots I hauled, nothing. Tens, twelves, hundred at best. After stumbling at the start of his trip. This was all four and five hundreds. This was five and six hundreds. This was all six and seven hundreds right here. Captain Scott Campbell Jr. is on the crab. I mean, the fishing's here. Guy needs to be taking advantage of this. Junior wakes the crew after three hours in the rack. General, are you fresh? Is that time? You want the truth? <laughs> they whip her. Go whip. They are soaking. They've already soaked all they can handle. The biggest thing is not getting complacent, not getting lazy. Every penny that these guys make this trip will be earned. As the guys hit the deck, Junior's kid brother, Whip, calls home. How you doing, babe? Oh, I just called to see how you were feeling. Set him back! <laughs> oh, yeah. We're in them, boys. <laughs> oh, jeez. Six, six, zero. Nice way to start the day there, fellers. Bob, where's Whip? Is he still inside? Yeah, we, we got like uh, 40,000 more pounds to go, and then uh, I'll fly out. Chop, so chop, I should Whipper. be home on the, uh, the 10th. Yeah, talk about it when I get home. Bye, baby. Miss you.